Hi, okay. We're making a minimalist base defense game. Mm -hmm. Throne for and I click something. Ah, press F, okay. This is my cat Paul, she's quite good at game dev. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, let's just skip ahead a little bit. Oh, they've been working on this game for 81 days. That's a lot, we must hurry. Yeah, I agree. During the day you build and upgrade your castle and at night you defend against waves of enemies. If you wanna know what happened so far, check out the last videos cause we're gonna continue this development journey right where we left off. In this video we're gonna build a new level and give the game to a bunch of friends for playtesting so we'll see what they think. Day 83 and we continue to be indecisive about our combat system. Now you can once again hold the attack button to attack. You can also use the night horn to collect all of the taxes from all of your buildings at once. We finally had all of the systems and the tutorial in place so you could play a proper one or two hours of Thronefall. At this point we became very excited to finally give the game to a bunch of playtesters because we had no clue how people would react yet. So here you can see us write up a little to-do list of things we gotta do before we can hand out the game for playtesting. That mostly included a bunch of small polishing things like putting a marker on the closest enemy so you can see who you are gonna smack. There were still a bunch of very ugly gaps in the walls of the castle so my next job was to fix those. We also got those little tree groups here and they are supposed to disappear when you build something that overlaps with them. We got three little tree groups in the middle of the map here. And now they disappear when you build on them! Woo! Yeah, I know. It's very sad what game developers get excited about. Day 85 is also where I started my first Thronefall music experiment. There are stuff to do, so let's do some. I changed the visuals when the level is locked. So now it says speed Neuland tutorial to unlock this level. And I also wrote a save load system that saves your progress to a text file. I really like saving to text files cause it's easy to troubleshoot both for me as well as for players who wanna mess with it. All right, not only does the save system work now, but I think the load system works as well now. It seems like all of the perks are still unlocked. My high score, that all seems Great, too good to be true almost. Task done. In the meantime, Paul set up a little trailer and a Steam page. The trailer says the game's coming in spring 2023, but that's uh, a lie. Are you, are you, are you know, you know, wish, w wishful thinking is the word I'm looking for. <laughs> I made another music experiment, this time trying to go into a more modern direction. I think it unfortunately doesn't fit the game too too well, but I like it anyways. our village to feel a little more alive so I made units wander around a bit during the day. Unfortunately this looks a little bit like an ant hill. Everybody's just aimlessly wandering around. Here's a different variant where they don't move as much but it's still distracting and it looks kind of bugged. We tried one more solution where during the day everybody's wandering around their barracks and at night they go on their positions. Out of the solutions we tried so far this was the best but eh, didn't feel entirely right yet. So we tried one more option and that was to add these villagers here and they're just wandering around. And now flee, you fools, flee. And at night they hide in their houses. At first glance, this looks like a good solution. I mean, you probably think that's a good solution, but it turns out that this is once again very annoying and distracting when you have to look at it all the time. I agree this realization takes a moment to sink in, but yeah, this this still doesn't really work. Click undo, sometimes doing nothing is actually best. So far we have two levels in our game. This is Neuland, the tutorial. And this is the first actual level called Nordfels. I had this vision for a level where you would build a castle on the side of a mountain. A level with a lot of verticality, a lot of space, but also some narrow pathways. Or in other words, it was time to build Durststein.
one who's usually making the art for Thronefall, but I try to help out where I can, cause Paul usually has a lot of other things to work on as well. Here you can see me work on a placeholder mesh for the gold mine building, but I think it turned out well enough that it might actually end up in the finished game. But that will be for Paul to decide. I, in the meanwhile, will have to check out these weird holes in the navigation mesh. So basically the surface all of the units work on, which luckily turned out to be a relatively easy fix. I do want to walk you through the entire process of how building a throne for level looks like. So the next step in my process is I have to connect all of these buildings. Cause every time the player builds a building they can potentially unlock some new build slots where they can build some new stuff. So I just gotta define which building unlocks which other building basically. As a game designer every level you build is more or less an experiment. So this time the experiment was to give the player lots and lots of space and have a lot of verticality in the level. It remains to be seen if this experiment worked out because for now I gotta focus on some other things. You can see I'm just spawning in a couple of test enemies here cause I still gotta figure out what kinds of enemies I actually want to have on this level. Okay, guess on which day we are now. I just um, checked. Um, sure it's day 60. What I think is quite funny is that you are basically the one working through the development schedule and I'm just going off on a tangent making, making content and I, I basically never look at the development schedule we made. It's kind well, of to be honest, I haven't looked at it in, in like precision. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> We were suffering a little bit from the typical game dev curse of everything taking longer than expected. One of the next steps to build a throne for level is actually to draw all of the level boundaries. We were still preparing for our first round of playtesting, so it probably makes sense to do that for the tutorial, just to make sure that none of our playtesters can jump into the river here. Okay, I uploaded the game to Steam. Are you prepared? Will it launch correctly? This is always a little bit of a... <gasps> no way, it launched. Ah, it even shows the little thing in the corner. Oh my god. We were wondering how to explain the enemies spawning out of nowhere, so we tried putting a couple of enemy tents all around your base. We know this is once again one of those things that at first glance seems kind of cool and works well, but unfortunately when you spend some more time there you realize that it destroys a lot of the coziness it had before. When your base is still empty it looks especially weird. Obviously we could make the enemy base grow with your own, but nah. Boop, 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 undo, they're gone. I'm getting back into the content grind, building the functionality for the mine. Lol. 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 I finally decided that some cavalry enemies would be perfect for Durststein. Check this out. <laughs> the little riders. Stop right there! We're gonna beat you up! Stand, 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 stand. We found a different solution for the level boundaries that is not as intrusive as all of the tents. It's a very simple solution, but simple is good. These enemies are glitching through walls, which is not very good. Paul made the tutorial tooltip so tiny that nobody can read them anymore. And it was also already obvious that all of our playtesters would whine about the tooltip blocking their view. But we don't care about whining, so we did it anyway. The moment of truth. We sent out a bunch of early Steam keys to a bunch of friends and eagerly awaited their feedback. Durststein was actually not finished yet, so it wasn't included in the beta test build. And I just spent the day working a little bit more on that, balancing the difficulty of various enemy waves. I even added another structure you can build, these barricades that slow enemies down. Difficulty balancing all of the waves is a surprisingly time intensive task, cause you have to play over and over and you get steamrolled quite a lot. The feedback from our friends was in and things were looking mixed. Overall it seems like they really liked it, but they had oh, oh so many suggestions for stuff they wanted to be improved. Yeah, so very helpful and painful at the same time, cause all of a sudden we had a bunch of new tasks in front of us, but we also knew that this would only make the game better. I think I did some difficulty in wave balancing. Paul added this beautiful little chest that shows you how many coins you have. One thing the playtesters complained about is that the combat system was a little too far on the minimalistic side of things. So our new plan was that every weapon would be a combination of auto attack and one activatable ability. You just saw that one activated there, uh, doesn't have any sound effects yet and so on, feedback's a little lackluster, but you get the idea. For the bow weapon, playtesters additionally wanted to have the ability to lock targets, so we added that, so we were just slowly but surely chopping through our massive to-do list. The funny thing for me was that I really wanted to keep working on Durststein, but I kept getting sidetracked. And now, especially after all of that feedback, it just made more sense to nail the gameplay on one map before we try to do it on two. Woo! Today's day 100. Incredible. I'm currently working on a unit command system, cause people or our playtesters kinda wanted more command over where your units 
are where they stand. So you can now vacuum up a bunch of units and tell them exactly where to go. This has both a very large impact on how the game feels on the fantasy but also on the balancing. So this very simple change means that I'll probably have to rebalance almost everything. But on the plus side it feels absolutely fantastic, like you feel way more in control now. If you see a bunch of useless units standing around you can just be like, follow me you fools! All I can say is the playtest was 100% the correct call, I'm so happy we did that. Another problem playtesters had was that the castle you built kinda felt too similar each time. So there weren't enough customization options. I made a plan for customization options, I prototyped customization options. I coded customization options. On the highest tower level you now get a choice. What tower do you want to upgrade into? Time for me to build some placeholder art for all of the different tower types. In case you can't tell what's going on here, it's a tower pouring hot oil onto enemies. Burn. Haha. <laughs> Burn. <laughs> I think we're gonna make the same change to the barracks so you can pick which kind of unit you wanna build. And hey, maybe we'll even do it with the castle center. We got lots of cool ideas. We got energy. We got motivation. The development journey continues here. So click on this video or playlist or whatever you're seeing on screen right now and just keep watching them throne fall devlogs. Thank you very much for sticking all the way around to the end. And wishlist throne fall on Steam, goddammit! <laughs>